When the iPad hit the scene in 2010, it felt like Apple just created the whole tablet idea overnight. But for those of us who dig a little deeper into tech history, it was clear that the idea of a tablet had been kicking around for ages. And believe it or not, the iPad wasn't Apple's first rodeo into tablet tech. You might think of the new NPDA line from 1993 as Apple's first stab at it. But even that wasn't the starting line. Let's wind the clock back to 1982, to a little known chapter in Apple's saga called the Bashful. This is the tale of Apple's first flirtation with mobile computing, and it's a story worth telling. So what's the deal with the Bashful and why the quirky name? Buckle up, cause we're diving into the story of the iPad that never was. Our story kicks off in 1982. Steve Jobs was riding high after Apple's early success and was itching to push the envelope even further by scouting for top-notch designers who could shape the future of Apple products. Enter Harmit Esslinger, a German designer with a knack for turning setbacks into stepping stones. After getting negative criticism in college for his radio clock idea, he went on to create Esslinger Design, which later evolved into Frog Design. This guy had his hand in designing the iconic Sony Trinitron TV, among other cool stuff. Esslinger threw his head in the ring and blew everyone away. He dropped over 40 designs and his vision was clear. Make Apple products stand out with sleek lines and a fresh color scheme. Esslinger's formula was pretty straightforward. He was all about clean lines and shapes that make everything look neat and tidy. And he ditched the boring beige for an off-white, snow-white fog vibe, giving Apple Gear a look that screamed modern and cool. Jobs would hire Frog Design, and this would become Project Snow White. And in true Jobs fashion, he sprinkled a little fairy tale magic on this project, naming potential devices after the Seven Dwarfs. And in the midst of all these designs was the Bashful. Named after a dwarf, this concept was all about exploring what a portable tablet could be. We're talking touchscreens, styluses, and even a keyboard which kind of looked like it was borrowed from an Apple II. The Bashful came in a few different flavors, some with floppy drives, some with styluses, but all of them way ahead of their time. But as far as any of us can tell, the Bashful stayed in the concept phase, probably because the tech just wasn't there to make it all happen. And then a few years later came the big twist. Jobs got the boot from Apple in 1985, and who knows, maybe that's why the whole tablet idea got put on ice. But the story doesn't end there, because even without Jobs, Apple rolled out the Newton PDA in 1993, a good decade after the Bashful's debut. And you can bet that the Newton has a little bit of Bashful DNA in it. So there you have it, the story of the Bashful. This forgotten tablet concept reminds us that even visionary ideas don't take off right away. Decades often pass before the surrounding technology can catch up to match the innovator's imagination. But big dreams and early experiments inevitably lay foundations. The Bashful never really saw the light of day. But as a fascinating artifact of Apple lore, it points to the ambitious ideas brewing behind closed doors and it serves as an inspirational signal that today's impossibilities often become tomorrow's game changers. So if you like learning about the Bashful, check out my other storytelling videos on fascinating technology origin stories. Your support really motivates me to create, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.